Okay, well, today I'm joined by Daniel Dong, who's the manager of expansion growth at Samsara. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Declan. Excited to uh, chat. Okay, well, we're going to talk next half an hour or so about ABM um, and uh, learn a bit more about your ABM journey. But I think I'll tell a bit of a story, actually. I came across Daniel. Um, there was some news release about some awards uh, not too long ago, actually. And I saw that uh, you were awarded the ABM Nerd Award, which kind of jumped out at me a lot. And I, and I started digging around, started looking about on your profile, started learning a bit about you contacted you to say, hey, would you like to be a, a guest on Let's Talk ABM? So first of all, congratulations on that award, um, which I think was from the ABM um, Leadership Alliance. Um, the award, I think, was all to do with uh, a heavy emphasis on those uh, B2B marketers and those ABMers that have a heavy emphasis on data in their campaigns. So let's talk about data, if we can, just for a second. So we'll, we'll start off on, with a big, to big topic, and then we'll be a bit more kind of wide as we go on. But let's talk about data for a second. I mean, data you know, is a huge part of any ABM program. Um, do you think that investment is, is, is valued, or do you think people actually undervalue the importance of data in ABM? I, I think... Um... That, that's a question that's a very interesting question I think a, maybe a better question to to ask would be how do you know the investment is the right kind of investment mm. uh, right uh, for for the organization because uh, every company is is at a different stage uh, and so if you are a earlier startups looking for product market fit maybe you don't need to invest too heavily in say in 10 data because you know like the category isn't there yet um, if you are looking to expand into new customers, maybe the right move is to invest in some third party data as uh, in addition to kind of have a robust like first party like lead gen, mm. uh, website tracking, all those kind of things. And if you're kind of saturated your existing, uh, new, your new customers, maybe it's about collecting data from your customers and build new insights uh, for kind of upsell, cross sell. So the, the investment really depends on the stage of your company. But what I do think that, you know, uh, everyone can kind of benefit from, and, and, you know, I've kind of learned this along my journey as well, is to think about the end picture of like, if everything is perfect and you could have everything you want for the customer's entire life cycle, entire journey, what would that data roadmap look like? What kind of data would you need? And then build a kind of, like a like an architecture around it that can eventually support all of those things because there's a lot of data and uh, you can't get all of them you know uh, all in one place in one day so you know you, you kind of put it on a map and then fill it in as you know your organization is mature enough to to get to those points uh, would be kind of uh, how how I would approach it if I were to uh, approach it again today. Well, so I think we'll dig a bit more into that a little bit later, actually, Dan, and we'll talk a little bit more about data. But let's just talk about your ABM program there. My understanding when we were chatting earlier was that I think you started your ABM program about a year and a half or so ago. Um, mm -hmm. And it was obviously, I think the, the idea was to support your, your move from the kind of SMB space into the enterprise space. So what have you learned in that move from, you know, winning smaller clients to try to win larger clients what, what's been your your learning there yeah um that's a that's a great question so i think when you think about uh smb versus enterprise uh smb is is about volume so uh, a lot of i think that the framework to approach problems uh you know funnel optimization conversion rate optimization mm. uh sourcing kind of new top of funnel impression those are more similar to, I would say, a, a B2C uh, than, uh, you know, than, than, than enterprise, right? And so uh, there's kind of a, a shift in mindset uh, when, when, um, when we move, when at least our team started to support more of the enterprise initiatives uh, at the company. Uh, enterprise, I think, is, is more about the strategy of defining the set of accounts that you want to pursue and get as much data points, get as deep as you can into those accounts, collect as many data as possible, uh, and then eventually think about like almost like a regression model. Think about where, what data points 
are truly important in moving the lever. Uh, and sometimes, you know, like it kind of depends on qualitative feedback. Uh, you know, mm. I, I have a more of a quantitative background, so I like to have, think everything in data, uh, but there is a qualitative kind of component to it. Uh, and you just need a lot more time to collect those data. Uh, and so as, as you kind of progress, it's also good to think about what are some leading indicators that you can capture in your project. You know, if the sales cycles are, you know, I don't know, six months, a year or, or longer, and in some cases for uh, larger companies. Uh, and so think about what leading indicators you can capture uh, to give more immediate feedback on the things that you're doing. Um, could, could be helpful as well. And then so that's that's something I learned like about how you would approach it differently um, for between SMB and, and enterprise, you know. Yeah, I think it's, it's a really interesting point there around because obviously, you know, the, the, the word data is has been mentioned several times in this interview already. And I, I suspect it's going to be mentioned several times towards as we go through this interview. And interestingly, obviously, the, 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 the leading indicators sometimes aren't necessarily data sources in the traditional sense in terms of measuring the, the relationships that you're building in those accounts at an enterprise level or or measuring or trying to measure the re reputation that you're building in that account, right? And those two indicators will lead through to revenue, but sometimes you need to have a little bit of a kind of a more of a qualitative approach to the data as opposed to, as you said, a quantitative approach, right? Yeah, I think I think it's, a, it's definitely a, a mixture of, uh, of both, um, right? You, you can't just rely on qualitative feedback mm -hmm. um, because, uh, it, data does tell some sort of truth that you know humans are not able to capture, uh, and so uh, deciding what is the balance between the two, uh, mm. I think that's that's the the, the tricky part. Uh, that that's very interesting. Yeah. So when we spoke earlier, Dan, you talked about, and it's kind of struck a chord with me. You talked about your ABM thinking, and you broke it down into four categories: strategy, data, tools, and tactics. And once again, data is appearing there again, right? Strategy, data, tools, and yeah. tactics. Could you could you expand um, on the, on each one of those a little bit more for the audience? Yeah, absolutely. So when I think about strategy, I think about you know what is the kind of total addressable market mm -hmm. um, that you have with the products or services that you're offering, and how do you think about uh, what what accounts within that portfolio to break into? How do you prioritize accounts either based on qualitative feedback uh, from from people from uh, uh, sales, uh, or think about kind of if you already have some data, what are the kind of um, uh, segments that have already gained traction that still have a lot of potential? Uh, that's that's kind of what I would think about, right? Because you have a lot of accounts in your CRM. Uh, hopefully, I presume. How do you how do you prioritize them? How do you go after the one that's the biggest bang for your buck? Uh, and so, having that uh, alignment at the beginning across all of the go to market teams, uh, mm. I think that's that's a very important thing, right? Like aligning on that on that strategy, uh, and then from there, that's when you ask the question around uh, a data, right? Like, do we have the right data in place? Like I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you're uh, after looking at your strategy or going mostly after new customers, uh, then you would need a different set of data than say if you're going after uh, expanding on your existing customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so within those, there'll be different kinds of like uh, data that I'm sure uh, everyone is plastered with uh, all these kind of data vendors and like different kinds of articles. And you just have to categorize what what kind of uh, category does this data belong to and really think about their importance and what kind of value they could add both immediately uh, and, and down the long term. Uh, and so I think that's that's kind of the, the data piece uh, that is, everybody's heard a lot about, first party data, third party data, yeah. um, all those sorts of kind of things um, that you know people are probably pretty well versed at today. And then thinking from there, once you have the accounts that you want to kind of tackle, you have the right data to figure out how to prioritize, what kind of messaging are you tailoring? I think it's important to think about the tools, right? Because for ABM, you're not just a marketer talking directly to your audience. You, you want to be able to, to connect that experience for, for your prospects 
uh, and your customers. So it involves kind of cross-functional collaboration. So it, you know, sometimes when you think something works, like you need to make sure that other teams also have the tools that they need in order to kind of carry on the same messaging and same experience, right? Uh, and so that that really depends on the organization. Uh, on the on the growth team at Zimsara, we're we're very lucky that we have a lot of uh, people who uh, can be technical and can build MVPs uh, for things. So we iterate really fast and and build tools for maybe that's the SD, uh, SDR team, maybe that's a sales team uh, to kind of uh, get stuff rolling uh, more quickly. And so that can help really drive alignment. And then finally, you know, thinking about tactics, I think this is kind of where uh, uh, marketers uh, are kind of, you know, are, are really paid uh, to do, uh, you know, thinking about what, what creative messaging can you kind of get people's attention? What, what channels and ways uh, can you kind of, you know, ignite that kind of conversation, whether that's through, you know, uh, you know, more uh, deeply insightful content, whether that's through kind of a uh, a nice nudge like a like a direct mail or you know like a like a in person events with some sort of like twist. I think there's a lot of tactics that you can kind of try, um, but that's where marketers can be uh, a lot more creative. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I think about those four areas. Well, I think it's very useful, actually, that people think about those buckets in a funny kind of way, that they think about those four areas where they have to, depending, as you said, on, on their maturity, where they should lean heavier on or where they can actually invest more on, depending on which stage they are on their ABM journey. Right. And it's interesting you mentioned about the intent there. And I think um, it made me think about a conversation I was having with Dan, Danny Nail, who's um, who's uh, head of the um, ABM Center of Excellence at Salesforce. And he was talking about the difference between intent and interest. And he was basically saying that a lot of people lean on intent when actually it's not intent, it's just interest. And I think going back to your point around data, trying to pull together those data points to say, well, actually, is this account showing intent or is it just showing interest, which is a completely different thing to intent, right? So I think if anybody hasn't heard that or listened to that um, that interview, Danny Nail, it's definitely worth listening to because it kind of there's a lot of parallels with what you're saying as well um here so let's we mentioned earlier one and a half years of your abm program moving particularly from an smb into an enterprise uh focus what um what what's the learning that you've taken from it in terms of do you know what if i had my time again i would do that differently what would you do differently if you had your time again that's uh that's that's an interesting question um, I think, you know, one thing, one thing to kind of note here is, uh, what, one of my biggest takeaways is like, um, and I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier mm. is that, uh, data is not perfect, right? Um, there are things outside of data that whether it's something that can be captured but are not being captured right now, or just some things that really can be captured in kind of, you know, enterprise, uh, marketing and selling, uh, that, you know, you, you just need to appreciate that and, and really leverage it. But then the other pieces uh, around kind of, you know, like, even though it's not perfect, doesn't mean that it cannot be better. And like, how much time would you want to invest in that? What what does that end picture look like? Having that vision, I think, you know, um, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we build airplanes as we fly them, mm -hmm. but it would, be, it would be good to think about, you know, eventually, uh, where, where are you going to land? Um, and, you know, having that kind of vision around, if I can have everything I want, wh where would it be? Uh, and start kind of piecing that together. Um, I think that's that's something that uh, I, I would have wanted to have um, if I would, if I were to do it again. Yeah. And then I think the, the other thing is surrounding kind of you know, experimentation and uh, being patient with the data uh, and, and the results. Uh, I think, you know, coming from SMB, the conversions can happen really fast uh, in the enterprise, you know, less so. Uh, and so, you know, how do you have conviction around some of the experiments that you want to run um, and, you know, be patient with seeing it come to fruition? It takes a little bit longer. Uh, and that's something that I wish I could uh, tell myself earlier uh, w w when I started this journey is to, 
you know, um, have a little bit more conviction about your intuition, uh, stick to it, uh, but be, be very thoughtful about what kind of results that you need to uh, see. Um, yeah. No, I think it's a great point, actually, because I think, um, I think as you were saying, Dan, the, the, you know, when you're, when you're after an enterprise account, I mean, a, ABM, you know, if you actually define it, you'd say, you know, it's for targeting enterprise or mid-market enterprise. It's for targeting companies that have got a long sales cycle, that have got a complex sale, that have got a high consideration solution. So all those things point to time. And obviously, in, in the world that we live in, not everyone has time or everyone gives you time. So uh, I think a lot of other guests on Let's Talk ABM have said that one of the key things is to to make sure people are aware at the beginning of this journey, what the time frame looks like, what good looks like, and mm -hmm. for them to make sure that they're not, you know, unnecessarily kind of trying to speed you up or demand results that you clearly can't deliver mm -hmm. in that time frame. And as you mentioned, in the SMB space, things move quickly. People make decisions. They, they, the, the purchase price, the level of consideration is a lot lower. They can, they can put it on a corporate credit card or whatever and then off they go. But, you know, if you're selling something into enterprise, there are certain part, you know, steps that they have to go through. People need to be considered buying committees, you know, all of the above, right. That we all know and, and love or, or not love as the case may be. Right. Right. So, let's, yeah, I think, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I think, um, and then that's why I think leading indicators are are important, right? Like you, you also want to set the right kind of north star metrics at the beginning and really figure out what problem you're you're trying to solve. Are you solving a pipeline problem? Are you solving a, a revenue problem? Clearly define that and and build expectations around those with with your team. Maybe you you don't have a year or two years to see if you know uh the abm has a, a program has a positive roi so what what other metrics can you use earlier in the funnel to to give you that indication that you're successful or you're not in the run uh you're not in the right direction um i think that's that that would be important yeah and i think um knowing when it, you know i think also not having everything set in stone so being being flexible enough to say, do you know what? We thought this was going to work. It clearly it looks like it's not going to work. So we're going to change. And I think being not not being afraid to change, I think is a, is a good thing from an ABM point of view because you can't necessarily give it the nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen months because you you'll know from your initial work whether or not it's the message is resonating, whether your 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 account experience, your creatives, your value proposition, whether that's actually resonating with the market, and then you can obviously make decisions, right? So, um, yeah. Well, another thing that you said to me previously when we were having a chat before this recording was that we you said something something to me along the lines of we test and look at the data and then we decide to scale, and then you follow a a first principle problem solving approach. So, I mean, I just that maybe just think a lot actually about the approach you take there at Samsara. So, what, do, what talk me through that? What does that What does that look like in reality? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So, um, uh, Max, uh, the um, uh, the head of the head honcho for the Samsara growth team and uh, uh, the first kind of uh, growth marketer um, on uh, for Samsara, he, he he's kind of a, a champion for for this uh, first principle. Uh, problem-solving approach where uh, when you have a when you have a broad problem you should break it down into different components into different buckets right kind of like earlier when we were breaking it down uh, you know the APM program by mm -hmm. strategy you know, tools and tactics think about kind of the the different buckets of problems and what levers that you could potentially use to solve each of those buckets right um, I think I think it's important to have kind of a analytical mindset because the problem is very complex there are there are a lot of you know components to it uh there are a lot of things that you can prioritize you will never have enough time to prioritize all of them uh, so how do you kind of break down the problem uh, think about the levers that you can pull and the the levers that have the biggest impact uh and the lowest effort at, at, at any given time uh and how do you sequence them uh, i think that's kind of how, how we think about a lot of the problems that we solve, whether that's you know uh, in the SMB space, in the enterprise, or, or kind of anything else. 
And so once you kind of have that, like you have an understanding of the different areas where you can make an impact, then you start kind of testing out different hypotheses of what levers can you truly pull uh, in order to uh, solve kind of those issues, right? Is it is it a you know paid advertising? Is it you know a, a sales experience kind of optimization? Um, is it uh, different kinds of like door openers? Is it peer to peer uh, kind of programs to kind of get people involved? Like right? Like are you trying to create pipeline? Are you trying to mm -hmm. salary pipeline? Or trying to improve close rate, or you trying to upsell and cross sell, right? Um, think about all the like what what is the problem that you're trying to solve, uh, and then from there test out different things to kind of um, always have a mindset of like if you were trying to present uh, what you've done to somebody else, talk about kind of what is the incremental value of the lever that you're pulling, right? So always have a mindset to have an A-B test go in to, to have ways to kind of measure the impact that you have. Um, and you, you can do this with account-based marketing too, right? Like you just mm. chop the, uh, you know, addressable accounts into two separate buckets and one you run with a sequence that, you know, you're designing and then the other is control uh, and see how to kind of plays out over the longer term. So we, we do a lot of these tests to figure out what is the incremental value uh, of of um, these kind of different tactics that we have, and once we have that, you know, we can extrapolate that to to the larger universe, and then decide if that's something that you want to focus on scaling right now, yeah. right? Because with any kind of programs in ABM, there's a lot of enablement components going on. There's a lot of automation components that that can go into it. Uh, that takes a lot of effort, but you don't want to be doing that stuff before you can realize if there's true value in the thing that you're doing or if there's enough value for you to focus on right now. Yeah. Um, and so actually there's this book um, called Traction. Um, it was written like 2014, I think by a guy named uh, Gabriel Weinberg, uh, who's like a, a serial entrepreneur. Uh, and you talk about how like startups kind of, you know, test different channels um, when they're going and then they go deep into one channel to figure out if there's kind of actually traction in there. And if there is, then they, then they kind of scale it. I think it's kind of the same principle, uh, that, that we use, uh, although that book may, may have been more for, um, uh, B2C, uh, I would think, but you know, the, the principle is the, the same. The principle is the um, same. Yeah. 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 No, I love that. I love that idea. And I think, uh, I think there were a lot of, um, learnings there actually for anybody looking to, to to launch an abm program and thinking about that kind of as you said a lot of the testing a lot of the ab testing testing messaging as you said testing control groups a versus b there's an awful lot of uh, good thinking on, in there dan um you mentioned there your growth team and your colleagues um mm -hmm. you mentioned previously that it was a real kind of interdisciplinary team in terms of the, the makeup of that team and that there was some what 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 do you think it takes to have a to make a great growth team yeah i think i think uh, there there are a couple uh components uh i can i can offer my opinion uh mm. but uh you know i'm sure uh, there are a lot of uh, people who who would be better at, at speaking about this uh more intelligently uh but i think uh, there are a couple of things. So one one thing is, you know, what is kind of the North Star metrics that you are trying to improve and, and pursue, right? Like going back to the first principle, what is the problem uh, that that you're trying to trying to solve is the first thing. And then the second thing is, can you do you have the capability to iterate really quickly, right? Um, do you have the the mandate and the liberty uh, and and the skill sets? Uh, to do all of that. And so, you know, uh, at the, at the Samsara growth team, we're, we're very lucky that we have our own uh, kind of uh, growth engineering team uh, as well. So, you know, uh, when we need to do more complicated stuff, uh, that team is super helpful in like helping us to, to get everything kind of running in addition to, to scaling a lot of like really critical uh, projects uh, for, for the company as a whole. Uh, and our marketers are also... Uh, I would say pretty well versed in all sorts of different things, right? Like you don't need to hire necessarily a uh, you know uh, data science person in order to do a first iteration of a say like an intent model, 
uh, for example, right? Like you, there are things that, you know, people can kind of do the basics and have an MVP. And I, th- I think that encouraging that kind of creativity, having the latitude to do things, uh, that's that's very important to get get those experiments set up really quickly. And then when you measure those results, you know, having people who have analytical mindset uh, really helps with, uh, you know, uh, proving those uh, kind of business value to larger stakeholders and then, you know, uh, get them to kind of uh, be on board with you scaling them. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree. There's an awful lot of data, as you said, a lot of analytics involved in, in AVM. And there's also, I think, if you'd agree, uh, a requirement for a lot of commercial acumen and a, a requirement for people to be to to maybe actually come from outside of the classic marketing background and come even from an FDR commercial background to have to have experienced the sales because you need to obviously work really closely with sales and and having that credibility is 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 really important. I don't know, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would say having people from uh, diverse backgrounds. Uh, help you not kind of be entrenched in the way that you kind of always solved a problem, right? Uh, not what is the saying? Like not everything is a is a nail to to your hammer, uh, mm. or I don't know if I uh, say that right. But but yeah, I think having you know people with diverse backgrounds help look at problems differently. Maybe there are things in kind of their previous experience or industries or skill set that can help solve the problem in a new way mm-hmm. uh, that you can't necessarily be done if you just put all of kind of the, the the traditional people in the same room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're at the beginning of well, we're in February now, coming to March, two thousand and twenty-two. It sounds a bit weird to say that, but it's two thousand and twenty-two. Um, what does the rest of the year look like for you there and the team? What can we expect from you this year? Yeah, uh, that's that's a great question. So I think I think there are a lot of very exciting things um, going on uh, with with kind of the the ABM programs. I think you know we have you know better alignment than before. We have better infrastructure than before. We have more confidence with kind of uh, a lot of the experiments that we we've, we've run. So we know what what directions that we can kind of focus on and, and keep on scaling. Um, so, so I think I think there's a there's a lot of like pretty exciting projects, ideas, uh, orchestrations uh, uh, on the roadmap. Uh, there's also kind of um, more kind of different data sets that we can use uh, than than before uh, to kind of leverage that like holistic picture um, uh, of things to come. So, so yeah, lots lots of really exciting things uh, I think on our roadmap. Well, I'll definitely obviously be looking out for you and your posts on LinkedIn to talk about that as you uh, as you share them, no doubt, throughout the year. So just a, f- a few more questions just to finish off, Dan. So yeah. demand gen and ABM, there's an awful lot of talk about both uh, strategies, whether the, whether one is, is a subset of the other or whether they are standalone um, strategies. Where, where do you stand on this? Yeah, um, I think, you know, different companies name their teams kind of mm. differently and they could have the same name and do completely different things. Mm. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the, the principle is the same. If you just focus on uh, creating kind of touch points, if you just focus on specific engage, improving the engagement of this specific touch point, uh, then it's harder to kind of see the, the, the holistic picture, right? Because you can do a lot of different touch points um, but like, who are you really targeting? What are you really trying to educate them on? What are you really trying to get them to do, right? So whether that's like a ABM team or a demand gen team, I would hope that uh, uh, they kind of start from that question before diving into the, the specific uh, kind of tactics uh, to, to run, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because there's no shortage of you know creative ideas, you know email headlines or campaigns that you can run. Uh, but what where where are you really moving the needle? Where are you really making an impact as a team? What what metrics are you trying to improve? Those would be the question that's more helpful. And then you know as a team you have those skill sets to kind of leverage the marketing experience that you have to to improve them. Yeah, great answer, great answer, Dan. So what do you think is the hardest part of ABM? 
the hardest part of um, ABM? I, I would say like, you know, we, we build the airplane as we, you know, fly them and uh, it's pretty interesting like problem to solve. I, like I don't really necessarily know if there's like one area uh, that's like, uh, that's harder than the other. Um, but I would say like the, the critical things to kind of get right is, you know, alignment with uh, other, you know, go-to-market teams that's beyond marketing. Um, uh, surprisingly, that's that's the way to do uh, account-based uh, marketing, mm -hmm. right? And then the, the other piece is kind of around making sure that people buy into the value of data not just in the short term, but also in the long term, right? Like, how do you convince, you know, people to be okay with a three-year roadmap of data when, you know, when you're just there starting out? So, like, you should be able to, like, strategize on those things, you know, prove incremental values, get trust, get buy-in, also validate kind of your own hypothesis of, like, whether something is right, uh, but, but always have that kind of end goal picture in mind and then you know reverse engineer what steps that you need to take right now based on kind of the maturity of your team and the maturity of, of your business great answer dan last question to ask you um i kind of the way i kind of frame this is that you know you, you you're about to kind of shut down your laptop it's a friday evening you've had a you've had a tough 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 week and you're looking forward to enjoying the weekend and suddenly you know up pops a message phone call from a friend who's working for another b2b tech company and they say dan i've been asked to um to create an avm program i need some advice and you it's friday evening so what what and they say what 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 advice can you give me i've got a meeting on monday morning what's that one piece of advice you would give them um well there, there probably would be a, a couple of qualifying uh, question like what what is this meeting for right mm -hmm. like what what are you trying to to get out of the meeting um, are you trying to uh, get buy-in are you trying to get approval are you trying to get budget like what, yeah. what precisely are you trying to to get out of uh, this meeting and then the the kind of advice would would kind of be different but but one thing I would say is you know uh, account based marketing uh, is kind of, I feel like the, the framework approach that you should think about uh, enterprise marketing. So if your business is trying to get into this space, uh, it would be good to have some sort of program around it, but everybody is kind of different. So, you know, you'll need kind of time and space to figure out what that means to uh, what the ABM program at the specific company that you're working for means, means to them, right? Um, yeah different stages of the funnel uh, could, could be totally different. Uh, and so think about that piece. Uh, what, what, what is the most important thing at the moment for the business that the ABM, that a, a ABM program can help address? I think that's a great answer. So to summarize, what, what are you trying to solve with ABM? And then try to document that and also to get agreement on that and then then you can actually start to build out an abm program and abm strategy right yeah that's a great rephrase uh well, I'll, I'll, tell my, friend, uh, I'll, I'll tell my friend to call you uh, well no, no, i'm just I'm, I'm just summarizing what you said though it's your it's your it's your knowledge and my uh much much shorter and succinct <laughs> well thank dan thanks so much for um for sharing your abm journey today and uh and uh, we wish you every success there at Samsara and we look forward to, uh, to learning what you're going to do this year. Thank you, Declan. Uh, it's a real pleasure talking to you uh, and uh, hope to chat with you soon. Good. Thanks, Dan. Thanks.